Hey everybody, Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's Matthew devotion. We are in chapter 17 of Matthew and last time we were talking about this, the transfiguration, this mountaintop experience uh, and as Peter, James, John and Jesus come down the hill, they encounter something and I, the, the point is, is uh, what happens from Matthew's perspective when you come down from that mountain and that's our text for today. It says this, and when they came down to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly for often he falls into the fire and often into the water and I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So what immediately comes after the mountaintop experience? The valley experience. And what is Matthew making sure that we understand that they experience? It's human suffering. Human suffering is still going on. And I think this matches with a lot of the theme that we're getting here, which is Jesus is saying, much like John the Baptist, um, ha they did whatever they wanted with him, so he suffers and dies, that the path of Messiah is the same, that he's going to suffer as well. So, but I think the key is, is that Jesus is present both at mountaintop and at valley. He is, what, what does he do? The human suffering he, that, that he actually comes in contact with, he actually heals, right? He rebukes the demon in this case uh, from this, this boy who's suffering with uh, seizures and, uh, and so forth. And the hardest part here is to see that the disciples, they don't have the faith to do it. They are unable. They, they're, there's an inability there to do what Jesus is doing. Even though they've been given authority, this is the first scene where we've seen, hey, they're not really doing, um, they're not fully doing what Jesus was, at least the nine that didn't go up on the mountain. So I, I think part of what I wanted to ask you today is how good are you after a mountaintop experience? Are you expecting something more than you should expect? Um, because I think Matthew's being pretty accurate and real with, you know, Seeing Jesus for who he is is a powerful experience, right? That's this glimpse that uh, that Peter, James, and John got during the Transfiguration. It, it's it's a it is a huge event that's telling us a lot of stuff. But in this case, when you come down the hill, there's there's a level of human suffering, and Jesus will suffer on behalf of those sufferers in a way. But how do we respond to it? Um, how anxious do we get? How how much do we lean in to Jesus' healing and Jesus' at least his understanding of the human condition because he was both man and God? Do we do we recognize that? Do we um, do we ask for I mean it's one of those things where it's like, do we treat Jesus as so much God and so little human that we don't even ask him in prayer? Like, God, like Explain to me this human condition. Explain to me some of the stuff I'm going through because I don't like it. I mean, this is what psalmists do. They're talking about the things going on in their lives that just don't seem right. And, and they know that the God of the universe is going to put them right in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes they're saying, please, come do it now. Right? Come, restore everything. Do your work. Uh, and I, that's, that's good stuff to do that. Um, but we get stuck sometimes. We get stuck in cycles of, of kind of like either self-pity, self-loathing. Sometimes we get in cycles of self-pride, right? Where we're just constantly thinking about ourselves. And uh, and what are we doing to break that cycle? Uh, because some of you, maybe you're pretty far from the last mountaintop experience if you haven't had, maybe, or maybe you haven't had one at all, not that you remember. Um, and I will tell you that the king of all glory, the one who would show himself in light to Peter, James, and John, is also willing to step into the darkness of the valley where human suffering occurs and in fact take on suffering himself. He would suffer. He would be distressed. Uh, and that's the power of the gospel that through his uh, life, death, and resurrection, through the suffering that he actually uh, experienced, we actually have 
uh, seen him dis defeat Satan, sin, and death, and now we are pulled along with him uh, to new life uh, as Christians. So um, I pray that if you're having a hard time, man, reach out. Like, if it's not to the pastorate here, maybe it's to friends, whatever it is, because I think you need to be reminded of the good news. I think you need to remember that even in your suffering, even in your loss, even in your challenge, that the God of the universe uh, bows down into the muck and mire of our lives and experiences it just like we do uh, and then saves us. How powerful is that? All right. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your majesty and your glory, but also thank you that you bring it into uh, suffering, that you have showed us that you are willing to suffer like a human suffers, and you are willing to die like humans were meant to die, but you have basically destroyed Satan and sin and death on our, our behalf, that, that death was an actual intruder, and you've dealt with that intruder, intruder through through your goodness, through your gospel. We thank you for that. Help us to honor you even in those dark times and remember that you are present in the middle of human suffering and you don't shy away from it. In fact, if anything, it bothers you. You would say, oh, wicked and twisted generation, speaking of all the people around, that they just don't get it. But it's because of our in inability that you have come and saved us. We thank you for that. We want to honor you today and every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.